Welcome to this introductory lesson on text completion questions. These questions make up approximately one quarter of the verbal questions we'll see on the GRE. These questions omit one or more words that are essential to the meaning of a sentence or paragraph. Our task is to determine the answer choice that's most appropriate. Here's an example of an easy one blank text completion question. As you can see, for text completion questions with one blank, there are five answers to choose from. Now several of these answer choices may seem like a possible fit. Only one, morosely, is the most appropriate based on the word suffered. While it's possible that Tom was sitting stoically at the table, this word is not supported by any words in the sentence. As you may have already noticed, text completion questions are very similar to sentence equivalence questions. In fact, if you've not yet completed the sentence equivalence module, it's recommended that you complete that module first. Having said that, you can also choose to complete this text completion module first. Now it's important to mention that the missing information in a text completion question is not necessarily limited to a single word. We may have to select an entire phrase. Here's an example. In this example, both words must be well supported by the sentence. Someone who strives for improvement might want critique, but would he want a shrill critique? There's no evidence in the sentence that he would. The correct answer is E, because the blank is being compared to a hesitant commendation. Resolute is a good contrast to hesitant, and criticism is a good contrast to commendation. With answer E, the person receives information which he can use to improve himself, rather than praise that isn't really deserved. Again, don't worry, we'll talk more about how to analyze the answers later. Okay, so that's how the one blank questions look. Some text completion questions have two or three blanks. These questions will have three answers to choose from for each blank. For two and three blank questions, there may be just one sentence or as many as five sentences. To receive credit for these questions, you must correctly complete all the blanks. There's no partial credit. Here's an example of a two-blank question. For this question, the first column contains the answer choices for the first blank, and the second column contains the answer choices for the second blank. You may want to pause the video and try the question before continuing. Okay, in this example, the answers are A for the first blank and E for the second blank. How did you do? Notice that the two answers are arrived at independently. The first blank uses this part, and the second blank uses this part. Okay, let's examine a three blank question. Similarly to two blank questions, the answers here are determined independently, and all three blanks must be answered correctly in order to receive credit for the question. The answers here are B, F, and H. As you can see, the two and three blank questions can be quite time consuming. Remember that in each verbal section, we have 30 minutes to complete 20 questions. We might then assume that we have 90 seconds for each question. However, don't forget that we can expect to see three to five reading comprehension passages, and it can take a lot of time to read and interpret these passages. So, Try to keep to a limit of about 30 seconds for the one blank text completion questions and 60 seconds for the two and three blank questions. Also, keep in mind that we can skip questions and return to them later, so just as with the rest of the test, we should never linger on questions that we aren't sure how to answer. If you really don't know any of the words in the answer choices, move on to the next question and use the review screen to come back to this question later. In this lesson, we looked at the basic format of text completion questions. Now that you understand the task, let's move on to some specific strategies. We'll look at the strategies for each of the three text completion question types, and then we'll look at some common traps that test takers fall for on text completion questions.